name is Dr. Rick Sigill. I'm and action. Hey, uh, Jay had a... This is Kirk to them. And action. Hey, everyone, it's Dr. Rick. And Allie had a question about whether she could stop her zinc, whether we can stop the other supplements that I have been suggesting for impacting COVID in case you get in contact with it. But if this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to thrive. I am the integrative medicine. I like to do videos based on data, research, and also personal feeling. Sheltering in place has worked. The surge wasn't that big of a surge. Uh, when we get allowed to go out, and when the restrictions drop a bit, and uh, and we're allowed to go work out or go and mingle more in smaller groups, for the first two to three weeks, I would be cautious. Because if we truly have done a good job, there's going to be a surge. It'll occur between the second and the third week. If you just pass by your local emergency room on a Friday night, at eight o'clock, seven or eight o'clock. If you do not see the parking lot full, if you do not hear that there's a surge occurring based on reliable data, then I, I think we're gonna be okay. At that point in time, I'll probably start going back to my Planet Fitness gym, probably start going to movies, maybe plan on a trip. Yes is the spoiler alert. Yes is the answer to Ali. But my essentials are total omega-3, TO3. Total omega-3 for me would be in the form of algae-derived DHA. Occasionally, I'll do ALA from flaxseed, hemp seed. There's two different forms of total omega-3. There's DHA and EPA. And my suggestion is you should get at least 2,000 milligrams of total omega-3 daily. 4,000 if you're a cholesterol sufferer or if you have inflammation. So I do not get much sun exposure. So uh, in COVID times, I've really told my patients to ramp up their D, vitamin D3. I take 10,000 international units a day and my level last check was 68. I like that sweet spot if you're gonna be measuring levels to be between 50 and 70. 68, beautiful. Yes, because there have been some papers reported that low levels of vitamin D3 in the bloodstream have been attributed to having a worse outcome with influenza. You can kind of extrapolate that, I believe, to coronavirus, but hey, bottom line is, if it's a deficiency, fix it. I get criticized by a lot of my colleagues saying, you're just causing patients to have expensive piss. Uh, and I do not agree. I suggest looking into deficiency. I taste these deficient supplements or the deficient vitamins and we're good. Some of these things you can't find deficiency, but like, like omega-3, there is a blood test for uh, detecting how much omega-3, but it's very expensive. It's not covered by insurance. So I just assume if you have inflammation, inflammation markers, uh, old uh, arthritis, or problems with cholesterol, I just consider taking total omega-3. And as far as dosing, you have to go by standards as far as what was studied before to figure out, okay, the best uh, cultures in the world take this much, so let's try to mimic them. So that's why I suggest 2,000 to 4,000 a day. Vitamin D3, we're too far north of Georgia. Any state north of Georgia usually does not get enough direct sunlight. Uh, UV radiation from the sun will, if you get exposed, convert some of the pre-vitamin D in your skin. And that will go on to make vitamin D, the basis to a lot of hormones. But you have to have total exposure, at least exposure like a sunbed, of 95% of your body to uh, the harmful rays of the sun, which can open you up to melanoma. So I'd rather just have you take vitamin D. And plus in Illinois, not that many people suntan. And if you're fair skinned, you shouldn't be suntanning. And I don't suggest using those sunbeds. Follow your blood levels. If you are kidney, uh, if you are suffering from kidney problems, kidney failure, renal insufficiency, you really have to be careful with vitamin D3. And that's gonna be up to the nephrologist. Uh, I also suggest magnesium. I usually stress is, equates to low magnesium levels. Low magnesium equates to eye palpitations, muscle cramps, uh, insomnia, anxiety. So I take magnesium every day. I'll probably do that for the rest of my life. Uh, but it, so that's mine. I like magnesium potassium aspartate, but there's different forms of it. Uh, probiotic, also very important because I think that the immune system, and this is after COVID times, the immune system is usually hyper or underactive. And I believe that the immune system is based in the gut. So if you're eating crappy food, fix it, please. If you have autoimmune disease, take care of that, but also take care of your gut because a lot of the immune system circulates throughout the bloodstream 
comes from the bone marrow, but also comes from your gut. If your gut is on fire and inflamed, guess what else is gonna be on fire and inflamed? Your immune system, and you might attack yourself. Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE. So you have to be careful with that. So I think a probiotic every single day would be important. And my new suggestions for probiotic is four by four. That means every four months, you change to a probiotic that's less than 40 bucks, that has at least four different bacterias, and uh, the total amount is, of the bacteria is at least 4 billion CFUs or higher. That's four by four. So that's the way I would suggest it. I have other videos on probiotics, but I've rifled through uh, manipulating my suggestions. I think four by four is the easiest thing to remember for you. Uh, I'll put links down below. CBD. I think that CBD is fantastic. I do not see a downside. If you take CBD from medical cannabis, you have to be careful that the amount of CBD is great. The amount of THC is small. At least that's for me. People, my guys with post-traumatic stress disorder, difficulty with sleeping, uh, in, even in standard insomnia or uh, problems with anxiety, you probably have to dial yours up depending on your product, depending on what's available in your dispensary. But CBD twice a day for me is going to be the way I go for the rest of my life. Um, and it's going to be in the form of medical cannabis. Hemp is out there. I think the medical cannabis, if you can get a card, you qualify for a card in Illinois. I think it's uh, easier to get to. And by the way, when we let go of the sheltering in place, you just blew it. If you're thinking about getting a medical cannabis card, we can do it virtually. So contact me ASAP, because once uh, Pritzker releases, uh, you'll have to see me. If you're thinking about it, see me in person. Uh, the others that I have a plus or minus on, turmeric. I, because it's so expensive, because I've dialed in my inflammation control, I usually will only use turmeric because it's expensive uh, when I flare or when I anticipate a flare, like a big hike. I just did six miles up and down. That's three miles essentially up, three miles going down at Mount Hoy. And I'll probably do that every weekend and pick it up before, uh, if we get to that point, before I hit the Everest, uh, not Everest, but Colorado in August. But I'm sure I'm going to be needing more turmeric. Turmeric in the form of curcumin, perfect for decreasing inflammation. If you have uh, autoimmune disease, rheumatologic disease, IBS, you should be taking turmeric all the time. These, uh, I, I'm putting it off, but you can certainly take them all the time. Uh, ginkgo, I think it's great. I love it. It's a newer one for me, but it does help with my creative thinking in the morning. If you happen to have problems with brain fog, I think it's important. You always have to figure out where the brain fog is from, but I think it's important to throw ginkgo in, and uh, I'll put my unboxing video on that. Iron and B12 because I'm a vegan. I will probably always be deficient, but I think I've bursted enough in the last four months that I can kind of float for a little bit and recheck my blood levels. And if I'm low, then I'll check, I'll keep that in check, depending. So those are my seasonals. These are my seasonals. And then finally, quercetin. So quercetin, I did a video on how it is reliable in addition to EGCG for acting as an ionophore. So it gets a substance into a cell, but it also works for allergies and it happens to be allergy season. So plus minus, I might be taking this until we're getting deep into June, then I'll probably back off because there's a lot of pills. I mean, I'm taking a lot of pills and uh, sometimes it's like, oh, I got a gag with taking all this stuff in the morning. In fact, if I don't take it with very, very cold water, it's usually stuck here. So I call my vitamins uh, essentials or seasonals. And this is, this is going to be the stuff I put away. If we make it past that uh, sacrifice of the pawns uh, two to three weeks from the release, June 1st, I think. So zinc, definitely, because I, th the studies with zinc and the old coronavirus, EGCG and quercetin, this is, uh, there's no hydroxychloroquine. So I think zinc, when it's at decent levels, does help the cell fight RNA polymerase. So it does help to uh, thwart what the virus, coronavirus, does when it invades your cells. I think the data is strong. These are my three that I use for zinc supplementation. I think if we get past this two to three weeks after the release, then it's fine to put it away for now. In fact, you really ha have to give yourself a break off of zinc because when you take high doses of zinc, 50 milligrams twice a day, you will be pooping out copper. Copper is really important. So if you become copper deficient because you're taking zinc all the time, that can be another problem. So I think it's important to take a break. So we've gone about four months on zinc, time to go four months off zinc. Sometimes I'll suggest when you're not taking zinc, take copper, uh, but I just say stop. And I, 
can't fit more stuff in. I probably should check my copper levels just to see what they are. Uh, the other thing I would put away, because it's seasonal for me, astragalus and mushroom. I love these two. Anytime I get exposed in, in the distant past until now to influenza, I will definitely get on this. If I have a sinus infection, I definitely get that on my combination. The astragalus I love three times a day. The mushroom in the form of red reishi and sometimes shiitake or a blend, uh, amino blend. Uh, it depends on what I have in addition to a throat spray. But I usually break them out and then I put them back away. And they could be expensive, the combination, but uh, during these times, definitely because of the assumed improvement in controlling your cytokine storm, in case I would ever get to that point. Knock on wood, I didn't. Uh, also, NAD. I did a recent video on NAD. As far as the COVID patients who got exposed are suffering from the fatigue, which a lot of them are, um, I would go NAD. And with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, I think it's fantastic to have NAD. Uh, I was up 10 pounds. I'm dropping that. I'm cutting it quick. Beta-hydroxybutyrate puts me into ketosis. I can usually get into a little bit of ketosis. This makes me go into a lot of ketosis. And if you don't know the value of ketosis, probably should watch one of my videos especially if you're trying to lose weight or you're insulin resistant. And then rhodiola and ashwagandha, my go-tos for a long time as far as uh, adrenal support. Some herbs are labeled as adaptogens. Adaptogens are used to support a gland that is uh, struggling. So if in times of uh, work shift change, uh, seasonal change, you go from a daily savings time, to the the new change like now or if you travel from asia to here or from here to europe i think it's important to reset your circadian rhythm and sometimes uh taking the uh, uh, rhodiola in the morning the ashwagandha at night or just taking ashwagandha twice a day or taking the rhodiola in the morning and the rhodiola in the afternoon to help you with picking up and getting rid of the naps that you're taking and resetting your circadian rhythm are really important i think when you're adrenally fatigued and you're squeezing out, uh, just getting by with a little bit of sleep, that is not healthy for COVID times because the immune system will suffer when you're not rested. So uh, rhodiola and ashwagandha are spectacular. Uh, uh, they're good for resetting, but in those of you who have chronic stress, anxiety, PTSD, those two adaptogens are fantastic for supporting the adrenals. So they give you a little burst in the morning and they also calm the stress response. Uh, in order to have you develop your own stress response. So all these supplements, all these supplements are here until you get to a good level of eating. You should always be able to maintain your life with exercise, deep sleep, loving kindness, and nutrition. Now, if you are on the fence with that or still finding your way, I think the shortcut's gonna be with supplements. Uh, again, my, my, my colleagues uh, will usually say, I don't think they understand vitamins and nutrition like I do. <clears throat> so they'll usually say, well, you, is it really helping? And yes, it's really helping. I have data to back all this stuff up. Maybe they don't know about it. Again, maybe they don't believe in it because they see such spectacular results with me prescription medicines. And I do agree, prescription medicines are sometimes necessary. If I have a full-blown diabetic, for example, I'm not gonna waste time with berberine or cinnamon. I get that crap under control, work on nutrition, and then get the supplements going to possibly get off of the medicines. Being on medicines all the time or just shooting up with insulin, I think it'll save your life if, you're, if you go into diabetic ketoacidosis because of the hospitalization and you're terribly acidotic. Well, that's cool, but if you make no other changes, if you don't commit to a lifestyle change, you'll be on an insulin pump. And if you continue on the insulin pump, for example, and you don't make any changes and you continue with bad habit, you'll eventually have an insulin pump and a cholesterol medicine. If you, it keeps on adding up. So if you don't change the disease, then you will need medicines for life. If you don't change the nutrition, the exercise, and the sleep, you will need these things for life, and you're not going to thwart, you're not going to change the direction of where you're going. My idea of the supplements is to support. If you're early disease, support yourself while you find a way out of that early disease. If you're deep, embedded bad disease and suffering this might be a little bit lacking you might have to get on medications have surgical procedures see my my specialists and get a team together the more complicated the bigger the team so but you still have to reverse you'll eventually come back to me after the consultants say i'll see you in a year that's when you come to me and i'll change your lifestyle around with my coaches 
and then we'll get you so you don't even have to see them every year. But if you don't commit, sooner or later you're going to see me. So hopefully I don't have to see you at your wake, but or in the nursing home and rehab center. But again, it's up to you. So Allie, in a long-winded answer, wait two to three weeks, shelter and continue to watch yourself. If we can make it through this, then I'd say stop the zinc and be choosy. Get your deficiency tests done, all of you. Come back and see me, maybe August. Then let's prepare for fall and winter because I have a feeling it's going to happen again. It will happen again, but if we are healthy and warriors, we'll weather the storm. If we're not healthy and we're not warriors, I'll come see you in the hospital, but um, don't put that burden on your family. Do better for yourself. Don't suffer. Uh, fix yourself. So hopefully this gives you a little idea what to do. If you have any questions on what you should stop, put them down below. I'd, be loved, I'd love to entertain researching what you might be on as far as supplements. Otherwise, I'll see you at the next video.